Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic, the excessive daytime sleepiness. Excessive daytime sleepiness and essential concepts. We all know that sleep is essential for normal functioning of the human body. Sleep is very much important and essential. In fact, sleep is not a passive process. Sleep is an active process. Sufficient amount of sleep is required every day. In a 24 hour day cycle, we need to sleep at least 8 hours a day. That is one third of the time we spend on sleep. Sleep is good for improving memory. When we sleep and get up, our brain acts as a sponge willing to absorb memory as the sponge is willing to absorb water. And once you have memories when we sleep, the memory gets consolidated. So sleep is very, very important for memory. Sleep is important also to remove waste products, especially when we sleep, there is some amount of shrinkage of the brain with CSF being, being more and which gets and which washes away the toxins. So sleep is good for removing toxins. Sleep is good for improving memory. Sleep is essential even to improve our immunological responses. One of the main roles for sleep is improving memory and therefore sleep is very essential. If we do not sleep sufficiently, sufficiently, we get all kinds of adverse effects. Having said this, having said all the advantages of sleep, there are few conditions which at the other end of the spectrum produces excessive daytime sleepiness. The normal duration of 8 hours of sleep is far exceeded. They keep on sleeping in the daytime. Excessive daytime sleepiness. So what are all the important causes which produces excessive daytime sleepiness? First, of course, insufficient sleep. If we do not sleep for 8 hours a day, we sleep very less. The next day you will feel drowsy and if you do not sleep for 2 days, you will feel more drowsy and you will be sleeping the whole day. So for excessive daytime sleepiness, one of the important causes insufficient sleep. How do we find out? Difficulty waking in the morning. They find it very difficult to get up in the morning. Rebound sleep on the weekends. They keep on sleeping in the weekends and vacations with improvement in sleepiness. So when they sleep well, there's an improvement. Insufficient sleep is one of the important reasons for excessive daytime sleepiness. How do we assess this? Maintain a sleep diary and uh, education. How do you educate the persons? Sleep education and behavioral modification. If we go to sleep at a particular time of the day and get up at a particular time in the morning, we get sufficient sleep, not a more, not a, an, uh, uh, not an insufficient sleep or at the same time excessive sleep. We get sufficient sleep. For example, if we sleep night, night 10 o'clock every, every day and get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, it's 8 hours. And when we go to sleep at the particular time and get up at the particular time, there's a biological clock which gets set and you tend to sleep at the same time and get up at the same, same time. So sleep behavioral modification. You have to sleep in a dark, quiet room to get a good sleep. And then you have to have, you have to avoid excessive stressful situations and listen to good music or take a warm bath. So you need sufficient sleep. If you have insufficient sleep, the next day you will have excessive daytime sleepiness. So to have a good sleep, the environment should be dark. There should not be any noise. You should not think of any stressful situation because that will activate your brain. You will not get good sleep. If you still are not getting good sleep, listen to lovely music or melodious music. Read a good book. Take a warm bath. So when you have sufficient sleep, the next day you feel active, you will not have excessive daytime sleepiness. So one of the most important causes of excessive daytime sleepiness is insufficient sleep. 
The second category is obstructive sleep apnea. Some people may have problems with the upper respiratory tract, which will not allow the oxygen to enter freely, especially in the night. And therefore, when there is a decreased oxygenation, they tend to get up to get good oxygenation. So obstructive sleep apnea causes insufficient sleep, which makes them to sleep the next day over time, excessive day sleepiness. So findings usually you see this in obesity, obese people, they keep snoring because of the obstructive pathways and they may have associated hypertension. The diagnostic evaluation, if we do polysomnogram and then we see the pattern of sleep. Therapy. So person is not getting good oxygenation, obstructive sleep apnea. So we give CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure and upper airway surgery can be done by ENT surgeons and since obesity is one of the common reasons for obstructive sleep apnea, we advise people to lose weight. So second important category is obstructive sleep apnea. The third important category is narcolepsy. Narcolepsy, they keep on sleeping in the daytime. What are the findings? They have cataplexy. They have sleep paralysis. They have hypnagogic hallucinations and hypnopompic hallucinations. All these findings can be explained by one simple and important concept. When we sleep, we have two phases. One is NREM sleep, second is REM sleep. Non-rapid eye movement, rapid eye movement. After few cycles of non-rapid eye movement, one, two, three and four, then we get REM. REM phase is is the phase where we dream, there is a rapid eye movement and we dream. And in REM sleep phase, the mother nature has, has given a good protection in the form of hypotonia or atonia of the limbs, paralysis of the limbs, so that we do not enact our dreams. Whereas in persons who got narcolepsy, they do not go through the phases of NREM of 1, 2, 3, 4 and then enter REM. Here in persons who are, have got narcolepsy, REM phase enters directly without going through all the four phases. So when the person falls asleep, he immediately, almost immediately enters into the REM, rapid eye movement sleep phase. When he enters into the rapid eye movement sleep phase and when he does not have paralysis, he may enact his dreams or because it is a rapid eye movement sleep, there are dreams, he may have hallucinations. So there is an excessive daytime sleepiness with, with sleep paralysis. So the diagnosis is multiple sleep latency test. So as I said, when we do polysomnogram, when we do sleep latency test, it takes some time for the NREM stages to get over and for the REM to enter. But in persons who got narcolepsy, REM phase almost enters immediately. So early appearance of REM phase in, in polysomnogram is one of the diagnostic feature of narcolepsy. The treatment because they keep on sleeping, we have to give stimulants, morphinol or methylphenidate. date. And then since they have REM sleep behavior disturbances, we give REM phase suppressing anti-medications like Verlafixin. Right, this is the third category is narcolepsy. The fourth category is restless leg syndrome, sometimes associated with periodic limb movements. They cannot stand at a particular place. They keep on moving here and there. And when they sit also, the legs, they have to keep on moving the legs. This is known as restless, restless leg syndrome. Obviously, when we find the restless legs and, and kicking movements during sleep, we diagnose the restless leg syndrome. The usually predisposing factors are iron deficiency. Iron deficiency is one of the important causes for restless leg syndrome and sometimes even renal impairment or renal failure. So how do we treat? We treat the underlying condition. So when there is iron deficiency anemia, we replace the person with, we replace the person's iron deficiency with iron stores. And then we give dopamine agonists for treatment of restless leg syndrome, like pramipexol and ropinarol. So another important category for excessive daytime sleepiness is restless leg syndrome. And the uh, last category is excessive sleepiness either due to sedatives or medical conditions. Sometimes 
persons may be taking sedative medications or the sedation may be a side effect of few drugs like like anticholinergic drugs can like amitriptyline can cause sedation h1 receptor antagonists like chlorpheniramine malate can cause sleep excessive sleep or sleep promoting agents like gaba agonists can prevent sleep so we need to get a good history if a person is on sleep medication which is responsible for sleep we have to withhold the sleep medication second few medical conditions itself can predispose a person to excessive daytime sleepiness like hypothyroidism so a person has got dry cool skin uh, hairlessness bradycardia we have to clinically suspect hypothyroidism excessive gain in weight so the treatment will be the diagnosis will be to take a detailed history especially of, of drug intake and a detailed neurological examination general examination for especially like hypothyroidism we look at the skin the dry cool skin about the hair and then the obesity then the pulse rate so we take a good history and a detailed physical examination the treatment will be obviously to stop or withhold the sedative medications and the treat underlying condition like in case if it is hypothyroidism we have to replace with thyroxin supplements so sleep is very important it is an active process we need to sleep at least 8 hours a, a day having said that both sleeplessness or excessive daytime sleepiness both are not good for health so everything and anything should be in the optimal limits neither too excessive nor too less if everything is maintained in optimum conditions we will remain healthy i hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture if you have any suggestions or comments kindly post on to my youtube channel but please like and subscribe my youtube channel dr sinvas medical Con concepts and my fb page dr sinvas concepts thank you bye